Dr. Michael Fabricant. You're a Boris Johnson supporter for the most part. Even you must now think, Michael Fabricant, with all due respect, it's over. It's certainly not looking good. I'm not <laughs> going to go any further than that. Uh, look, I'm still backing him. I'm still supporting him. I heard that Labour lady earlier on come up with all the tropes about, you know, how we were backing Owen Patterson and all the rest of it, which we weren't because I was in that particular team. We just wanted the rules changed because the rules were unfair. And we, but I thought he was as guilty as hell. But hey, that's the detail now. Um, look, we'll just have to go and see. But I tell you what, I'm backing him still because, you know, I know what briefing he got all three years ago because I've been doing some inquiries. This is Boris Johnson when he heard about Chris Pincher. And it was an oral briefing and it was a complaint had been made against him. We've done an inquiry. We're not taking it further. He's been reprimanded. And the uh, guy who was affected is, 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 is happy and content with the outcome. Now, three years later, do you remember it? So all these accusations of lying, I think, are very unfair. Forgetfulness? Maybe. But you know what? If anybody's a prime minister and you're being told that on top of wars in Ukraine and everything else, are you going to remember some detail that somebody had a complaint made against them? And you know what? It's all been sorted amicably. I'll tell you what, back in one more hour and you'll have a job as a minister. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want a dukedom. <laughs> uh, if, I get, if I get a dukedom, you heard it here first. <laughs> um, I, in all honesty, the thing is, back him or don't back him, not enough people do at this point. And he's now going to be facing the liaisons committee um, any moment now, really, which is going to be a sort of on-air roasting, isn't it? And then you've got the 1922 committee reforming, possibly rewriting the rule book to oust him. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I mean, there's got to be elections. I mean, the, nobody likes the liaison committee, I can tell you. I was on it. And I remember Tony Blair saying he loathes it almost as much as 10 down as, as uh, Prime Minister This is the committee was... of, con of, of yeah. select committee chairs, yeah. very senior so all it, parlamentarians. Very, very senior parliamentarians, yeah. of which I was one, yeah. one so that I didn't <laughs> do it anymore. And I was on that committee. And uh, yes, and every time we, every so many months, we bring in the Prime Minister for that roasting. But that's what the Prime Minister knows he's there for. Michael, there is some gallows humour going on here. We're all, we're all shocked at what's happening around us. And, you know, if people watching this uh, at home, listening to it on the radio, will hear a bunch of journalists and politicians laughing and joking. There's a, f a lot of fear out there in the country about this cost of living crisis. A lot of people put their faith in Boris Johnson. And a lot of people are inbox GB views at gbnews.uk, our Twitter feed shows there is discontent that he hasn't been given a chance. Yeah. You would surely agree with that, I given totally agree that you're with backing it. him. I'm, you know, I'm a Twitter atom. Or is it a Twitter RT? No, that's the plural. I'm a Twitter <laughs> Artem. And I, I'm just, just a twit. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and I get lots of people saying this is so unfair. It's a witch hunt. But you know what? We are where we are. But yeah, the one I feel sorry for is uh, Nadim Zahawi. I was talking uh, last night to uh, Andy Street, who is the mayor of the West Midlands, who's yeah. over the moon with the fact that Nadim Zahawi is now the Chancellor of the Exchequer. You know, he could be the shortest serving Chancellor of the Exchequer that uh, we've ever had in this country. We, we, but you're right, we shouldn't be joking about it because be. we don't know who is going to take over. You know, we're, we're virtually at war. We don't admit it. But we're virtually at war with the Russians. I mean, every other week, Putin uh, says, and uh, viewers should not be worried about this because this is just what Putin says. But, you know, we could wipe the first bombs will go on London, not New York, not anywhere else. But London, because Boris is our enemy and the British are our enemy. So, you know, this is a... This is about the worst time to have a leadership election. I'm still hoping, actually, for the state of the country, for the sake of the country, that we can still hang on to Boris. But it is now being reported by very credible sources that Michael Gove has told the, Dep the Prime Minister that it's time to go. Boris Johnson can't recover from that, if that is actually the case. From Michael Gove, like that. <laughs> <laughs> you are joking, Liam. No, you are else? joking. I'm not. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not joking. If you said hold chief, on, hold on. I'm if not. You said I, the chief whip no, no, said that. I'm not joking. That would be serious. I'm but not for joking. Michael Gove to say I'm, that. I'm not joking because I really don't think this is a joking matter. I'm nervous about all of us laughing here. I don't think it's a good look.
right? Well, media, don't worry about looks. No, no, what's important look, is what's important. I, I don't think it's a good look for the political and media class to be laughing and joking about this. My point is... It's nervous as laughter, you, like as, during as, the Second World uh, War, as you during know, the Blitz. The point people is... People in Bakerloo Line, when they were sheltering from the German bombs above, laughed and joked. And, you know, that's the British spirit. So I'm not going to apologise. You shouldn't apologise for yourself no, I'm, I'm, for I'm not, because it is surreal what's going I'm on. I'm not apologising either. My point is that someone like Michael Gove, with the nose that he has for opinion within the Conservative Party, if he is now publicly ditching the Prime Minister, no, who is his I, only hope of getting back I to I love power. Michael Gove. You know, at, at one stage in our lives, we had a bromance. Now, stop <laughs> laughing, Liam, I'm being serious. But, you know, Michael Gove and loyalty, I think... Uh, in uh, in uh, grammar, it's called an oxymoron. The two don't go together necessarily. So when you say, oh, Michael Gove has come out against Boris, I mean, we've seen all that before. Incidentally, by the way, what was very odd was Sajid Javid's speech. She gave a good speech, though it was a bit flat. But when he said at the beginning, I'm not a quitter, and I thought to myself, hang on for a moment. He quitted from speech. Boris last time round. Yeah. But anyways, I don't know who wrote his speech, but I'd get a new scriptwriter. Well, we know that you're not a quitter, backing Boris as always. Yeah, Michael because Fowler I like fans. the guy, and I actually think he makes a good prime minister. Yeah. His a lot of our viewers will agree with yeah, you. Yeah, and I said on GB News uh, yesterday or the day before, you know, it's so difficult to keep count because so much is happening all the time. But I was saying on GB News, you know, you know, what are Boris's for? I said two of them. One is loyalty, and uh, I can't remember what the other one was. Uh, but the third one is, you know, <laughs> he's not a details man. But you know what? You don't want a details man. In a pro T Theresa May was a details woman. John Major was a details man. People say that Margaret Thatcher was a details person. Actually, she wasn't. She was much more the visionary. And that's what Boris is. And what I fear, that is, if Boris can't hang on there, and I do hope he does, we'll end up with some technocrat who will be as boring as hell and that won't inspire anyone, nor will it be best for the people of this country. Michael Fabrican, MP for Litchfield. Michael Fabrican, just briefly, because we do need to move on. We've just heard, haven't we, that Liam Fox, former Defence Secretary, MP for North Somerset, a very senior parliamentarian, former leadership candidate himself, has withdrawn his support yeah. from Boris Johnson. The collapse continues. Yeah, a friend and a colleague. Uh, yeah, we're hearing about the collapse. Uh, there are many, though, who, of course, are not collapsing, if you like. There are many who still support Boris. Uh, that doesn't get to be the news, but it's certainly getting to be a, a difficult, I wouldn't say untenable, but a very difficult situation for Boris. I think you know, he will be considering, uh, he, he will presumably be going in at three o'clock to the liaison committee. If he doesn't turn up, that could be a hint of something. But if uh, he goes there, it can last 90 minutes, two hours. We may hear later tonight a decision by Boris, or he may say, no, look, you know what? About 25% of the party has quit, but 75% are still with me. We'll find out. Michael Fabric